that time of the year again now. We need to get in and uh, and spray this. The uh, little green aphids are starting to uh, to leave loads of honeydew on the leaves, which means it's uh, a strong infestation. Um, these are going to be pruned probably in another couple of weeks. You can see we've got nice, nice thick thick growth coming on. I mean this was pruned back to just a couple of leaves four months ago. Oh, and then obviously this is the big one. I finally started to make some uh, some proper shape to it. four days after I did that uh, the oak and let's just see how I've kept the birds off it. Just a little bit of bubble wrap and that seems to have done the job. Looks like uh, between the bubble wrap and my axe man all that moss is still there. Just love it now when the, uh, the spring starts and you start getting some proper some proper bud leaves coming out. They just look so gorgeous. That larch was uh, repotted earlier in the year. Just coming to leaf now. Silver birch, that's always a bit later in the year, but I've had a look on the buds. We just started to get some swelling in those buds. Anyway, down to the uh, the bottom of the garden, I've got some repots to do. And just a quick look at the uh, one of the little growing beds I've got outside the back door. It's uh, got a combination, I think, sycamore, hazel. I think it's hazel, that's the sycamores there. They're all coming on nicely. I think that one, again, there might be some better experts out there, but I think that one. It's hazel, but please, please feel free to tell me. I tend to turn all of these sort of things into to marmot or small bonsais, but uh, at the moment just going to get some girth into them. And I thought the uh, that snow and frost was going to do for the grass, but uh, my attempt to repatch up that old growing bed looks like we have grass. We also have a couple of weeds, but hey ho, got grass. Very happy about that. And hopefully this will be the last time for the spring. I've got to do the final bit of um, soil so that I can uh, get all my 30 or so oaks repotted from their uh, initial uh, transplant soil. I tried a different um, uh, rock mix. So I like to use my golden grit. Um, and I've gone for this horticultural pot and grit which um, downtown had. But I think in my desire to get smaller grains, I've done the wrong thing. It's, uh, it's a really fine sandy grit and I've got a funny feeling what's actually going to happen is it's going to just drain straight through to the bottom. So that's going to be one of the mistakes which you might see. Um, I'm not buying any more of the uh, golden grit, so I'll just have to get by and see what happens. But uh, yeah, I think that might have been a bit of a mistake. So I'll get that mixed up and then... Um, then I was going to show you uh, repotting, uh, oh that's right, then just repots of some Chinese elms. Okay, so welcome to uh, the bottom of the garden again, uh, Xavier. Um, you'll be getting this one straight after Holy Week, so hopefully I'm fully recharged and ready to offer up all my sacrifices to the rest of the world and deny myself all my pleasures. No, actually, I was supposed to have done that in the last six weeks. Oh well, let's just have some fun instead. This is the first of the four that's going to be repotted. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll get a close up on that. Basically, just so you're aware, um, this is spent, uh, got it 
Yeah, got it a year ago from Saving Nurseries. Um, it was literally the last of their um, bedraggled stock that no one wanted. Um, and as always, what I do whenever I get anything that's imported, I immediately take it out of its uh, rotten soil and uh, and put it into some nice, nice free draining stuff. Um, I'll go to town on the roots. I'll go to town on the whole structure. Get rid of all the crossing ugly stuff that that's normally there with these uh, imports. And then I'll uh, I'll leave it at the bottom of the garden. And 95% uh, of them survive. And they're the ones that uh, I'm happy to work on the following year. So this one I'm hoping, looking at it, it's got a lovely little basic structure about it. Um, really, really happy with how that's coming on. We're starting to leaf out. Um, but I'm happy that how I set it up in the pots. Fine. The reason I want to put it into a different pot is, one, I need training pots. But two, it's, uh, it's a lovely Chinese elm. So I'm happy that I can probably do what they call a slip pot which is literally just slip that out of there and slip it straight into the other one. It's exactly as it sounds. Um, and then it'll look nicer and it'll be in a nicer pot. Anyway, let's get to the work. 410. I haven't got 410. It just means it's the 410th one I've registered. I've probably killed 100 of them. So let's have a look and see what we've got in here. Typical, I took my, uh, took my fleece off thinking that the sun was actually going to be warm and uh, it's not. I don't know if I wired yet, yeah, so I've wired it in. I mean, let's see how much roots happened in a year. Let's have a look. Let's get those straight so that when we pull it out, we don't rip a load of roots. And in fact, the way that we're advised to is to cut down the middle and then straighten up from there and then cut in really close once you've got that. Okay. Now, unlike the lemon, that's come out in a nice little ball. Um, there's the, the mesh that I put there. And I'm hoping I'll just go take the bottom part off and slip it straight in place. Big thank you to Nigel who mentioned that scale insects could be the reason why my lemons aren't um, budding out and doing as well as I thought. He did mention that if there's scale on them, they have a habit of uh, not doing anything after that. So I don't want to upset much of the root structure with this. I want to better slip it straight in. And also, you know, it is starting to spring out, so I don't want to disturb too much roots here because I don't have to. So there's a few weeds there I'll take out. Okay, find support. Not too much root growth through there, so. Cycling. Now, if you see at the top here, this here, that is the that's still some of the old potting mix. Um, let's see how far down we can go. Actually, see where the main roots start. Um, for those of you who are interested, Holy Week, very very important for. Catholics. Um, it's a time when we uh, when we try to share as best we could in the uh, in the passion of our Lord. Um, and I suppose the easiest way to look at it is if you've seen Mel Gibson's The Passion, we try to put ourselves in that in that state. Well, we don't really, but we're trying to imagine how it was for our Lord, which is impossible to do. Um, but it should be a time of offering up our, our suffering and fasting which we've done for what we should be doing for the six weeks but this that holy week is is just literally concentrating all our time and thoughts on the sacrifice our Lord made to save souls from a Christian faith point of view a Catholic faith point of view um, anyway so basically what I'm saying is I had quite a lot of religious services to go to late night ones, midnight, and goodness knows. I'm just taking off the top roots here. So it's a, it's a long week. Um, I was lucky enough that my children sing. Uh, my eldest daughter, Alex, helps run the choir. Well, hell, she sort of set it up and, and got it going. And they all sounded really nice. And my son also sings with it, um, as did my 
their daughter Kat. So it's really nice having a family, family all involved and stuff. Now, what I don't want to do is break that up, to be honest, too much. I know that I gave it a good prune last year, so I'm just really neatening it up. There's a great big root there, but we don't really want to leave the little wiggly up there, do we? So that can come off. Well, it's quite able to come off already. It's definitely something... Let's just do that. Right, OK. I don't want to turn this into a major... Oh, there's a big crossing. Oh, I believe that. No, right. don't touch. Don't touch. No more. Okay. Let's get it in the pot before I do too much to it. Okay. Um, now, what I do with this, because I know this is pretty good soil, I will collect it. I won't collect the roots and hopefully the stuff that's left on top I'll sort through later and be able to reuse. So as in Blue Peter style here's a pot I prepared earlier we've all seen me do pots so we don't need to go through that again but uh, got some soil there piled up in the middle use all of my sheathing up again. Okay, that will have grabbed on nicely. Just the process. Little bonsai get very, very used to. Just trying to dig it in. Fill up those air pockets with the new soil. And as I say, there wasn't too much disturbed with this, so this is just about packing it literally around the sides. And I'm massaging those roots out into the soil. And that is it. I'll, um, I'll water it in and uh, put it in a shaded part of the garden. And then I'll continue to let... Mm. I won't let them completely run. There's one here I definitely want to get rid of now. Far too long. Let's take the nubs off some of these. Yeah, so that's it now. Um, and my advice to you now, I mean most people, let's ask, if you're going to buy a Chinese album, that's what you're looking for. In fact, they're normally in the shops, although as I said, I couldn't find you when I went to downtown, probably up to about that height. And they're the little squat ones and they're normally what you call broom shape. Um, so they're great big sticks straight up, like someone stuck a broom in the ground. Um, and they're a chaos of fine branches all over the place and you pay, well, you have to get a mortgage normally to get those. Um, in fact, you have to get a mortgage to get most bonsai these days. Um, that one's going to get cut back there, actually. There's no way around it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I've said it before, guys, if you're going to buy a bonsai, um, these, these are really hardy, they'll survive well. But you look, your primary question every single time is about the soil. If you're getting it on the internet, um, or you're bidding on eBay, questions. The first question is always the same. Is this tree an import? Um, if it is an import, which it's going to be, it's not a problem with that. That's where, that's where you get most of them sourced from. Um, or is it? Or it could be they'll say it's from the home stock cuttings. And that's important to know, because that'll give you an idea of just how much roots there are in it. 
Um, if they've done it from cuttings or they've done it themselves, then it's going to be really healthy probably. But if they've imported it, you can see from the picture whether you've got this sort of granular soil. Ask them, when was this one repotted? And if the answer it hasn't been repotted, ask them when did you get it? You know, not worry about the price, but what you're trying to find out is just how bad those roots could be. Um, once you've got those questions, I mean, most, most of the dealers on the, the good dealers on eBay or wherever will give you those, that information or it'll be in the details. But that will just help you rule out the, um, the few rogues that are in there that are, are literally trying to uh, flip quick some imports they've got really cheaply without having done any work apart from perhaps throwing some soil on top. Um, you have a right to ask those questions because truthfully, you know, you're going to spend money. Um, I, uh, at the moment, I think I saw something like that in downtown, but not a clean version, was at uh, 35, 36 pounds. This has been taken back to basics, uh, and now it's the secondary structures being regrown. Um, for something of this sort of quality, you'd be, you'd be paying over 40 pounds, and certainly if you went to Herons, um, I think they've got them on for sort of 48, 49 pounds. You're going to pay that money? Ask about the soil, ask where they got it. Right, I've got three more. I'm going to do exactly the same thing with them. So, I don't think you need to see that. I'll show you the finished product at the end. Okay, so that was 4.11. Um, and I say, I'll be quite happy. I'll leave that now in that pot. Two years, definitely. But I know I could leave it for three, and all it just means it would be just particularly root-bound. So, yeah, there you go. And uh, this is the final one ugly little monster um, obviously I've got all this problem here with the branches and wire scars and broken but there's something about it that I like um, twisty gnarly this this horrible thing here but I'm gonna have this going as a an unusual tortured soul I think we'll call it the tortured soul bonsai 408 yeah, so that's them all repotted and uh, I'm cold and it's about to rain, believe it or not, so I'm going to uh, call it a day.